Eventually had a really great opportunity to move to Acer as the global creative director. I ran a team of uh, around 40 people there. Uh, it was more or less an internal agency. So it was a lot, a big, a big scope of work and I learned a lot. It was a lot of pressure on me at first. I was a little bit nervous when I first started the, the role. It was a, lot, a big responsibility for me. Hey everybody, Mark Ahrensberg here with The Pure Now Show. This is episode number 17. My guest today is Joshua Roberts. Joshua, a former magician, now brand strategist, is living full-time in Taiwan. Joshua left the States to follow his dreams of travel and being a creative professional. Here we go. Hey, Josh. Hey, Mark. Thanks so much for being on the Pure Now Show, man. Really appreciate you coming on and spending some time. And uh, we're super excited to talk to you about what you got going on. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're uh, a fellow statesman. You're from the Seattle area originally? Yeah, exactly. You look like a Seattle guy. You got the hat, you got the beard. It's kind of Seattle slash Portland thing going on. First of all, you're in Taiwan, correct? Yes, in Taipei. Taipei. Yeah. Let's talk about how that happened. Being from the States, you know, there's a lot of expats that come out to Asia to find themselves, find new opportunities. What was it that inspired you to leave the States and, and come out to Asia? I think it was just a time in my life. Uh, it was um, around 2002. I started to travel a bit. I traveled around for about a year. I ended up coming here and really loved it. Um, it was at basically the end of a year's worth of traveling, and um, it was a really different spot than all of the, the previous locations throughout Asia that I was in. You know, I spent a couple months in China, a couple months in India, a couple months traveling throughout Southeast Asia, a month in Australia, and just after the end of all the traveling, once I got to Taiwan, it was actually during SARS, you know, I just kind of felt like it was the one location that I landed where I didn't feel like a tourist. People were really warm and friendly. Not to say that people weren't warm and friendly in other locations, but it was just a different feeling. I didn't feel like a tourist and nobody tried to sell me things or take me places. You know, this is pre-smartphone era, uh, 2003, and um, it was just a different time, you know. I came here on a five-day layover, and I ended up just staying. So I mean, a lot of kind of interesting things happened in this short amount of time, five days, and I knew that the island just had more mystery and, and things that I was interested in, and I ended up staying. Uh, let's yeah. talk about that, how you, you know, went from UI, and now you're, you're doing your own thing, and you've got many yeah. years in the business you're a very seasoned professional. Let's talk about that journey and, and how you've ended up where you are today professionally. Yeah, um, as I mentioned, you know, I started building websites very early in the 90s, like 93, 94 with uh, Netscape Navigator Gold was sort of like my first experience getting into doing web design and really it was just a, a means to an end. Like magic was my love, my, my main passion and we needed a website for the business and that's the, the Kickstarter. And I could even, I, I could even say, although I've never really studied design in, a, in an academic sense, I was always interested in things very visual because even when I can think back how I really got started in design, you know, even when you take, you know, an English writing class and you've got to make a document that's like X pages long, I never wanted to write too much. I never wanted to do too much work. So how could I lay out the page in a way that would make the page look pretty full, but could extend, you know, I, I, don't ha I didn't have to write so much to make more pages. So these were like early things that kind of got me into kerning and, and, and line height and, and learning about the, the margins and the spacing and learning about typography. And it was really kind of self-taught. There was not too much back at that time, but that was the start. And that really pushed me into, you know, when I finished college in 99, I went to work for internet startups in Seattle doing design-related work, uh, web-related, web production, 
uh, eventually landed uh, a job as a UI designer for a Microsoft vendor and worked on a lot of different kinds of tools and applications. And I left that job to travel and eventually landed in Taiwan. I began working as a 1080 freelancer contractor for the, the company that I had left. Uh, I did that as a remote uh, working job in, in 2003. It was a little different doing remote work at that time. The, you know, the internet was not quite as fast. You know, we had calling cards. We, there were no smartphones. Things were a little different, you know, no Slack. And eventually through doing that, I, I uh, eventually started doing other freelance projects, some in Taiwan and some out of Taiwan. Then I started working, doing UI and product design at a, at a startup in Taiwan for a company called Getchi. And I was there for quite some time, I think a, a bit over six years. And eventually had a really great opportunity to move to Acer as the global creative director. I ran a team of uh, around 40 people there. Uh, it was more or less an internal agency. We did everything from product photography and 3D video to advertising. We managed the, the global uh, website, uh, all of the copywriting. So it was a lot, a big, a big scope of work, and I learned a lot. It was a lot of pressure on me at first. I was a little bit nervous when I first started the, the role. It was a lot, a big responsibility for me. And then around four years ago, I decided to leave and start Level Interactive, and that's been another really great turnaround, a, a new corner, and uh, a new journey, basically. We found some really interesting ways. Actually, um, my wife came up with some really, really great ideas for how to market the skincare brand to Taiwanese consumers. We're mostly selling in Taiwan. We have a distributor also in Hong Kong, and you know we get some sales outside of those locations, but we're mostly focused in Taiwan. So Mandy, my wife, had an idea that, based off of our retail experience, actually, we noticed that of the six SKUs that we produce, one SKU, which was the latest SKU we introduced, was outselling all of the other SKUs. And we think it's because that was the only one that had a physical sample, had a three milliliter sample. So we produced samples for some of the other SKUs, and we have now been running a campaign for two and a half months, maybe three months, where people can register for free samples online and we mail them to their house and they go into a sort of automated system where we follow up hey mark we were sending out the samples to you you should receive them in a couple days and then it waits 10 days hey mark you probably received the samples and uh, we're wondering what you think and we've got a sort of like follow-up sop but based off of this campaign we have a 14 percent conversion rate there's about a four and a half times return on our ad spend and the average order is around 1500 NT on our website. So it's quite successful, like it, it works really well and what we learned didn't come like so naturally, it came because of our retail experience that we just realized people need to try skincare products and samples play a big role. You know, we've been trying this campaign for a few months and it's really interesting how it works. <laughs>